We would like to start by introducing our panelists. First, we are pleased to introduce Dr. Alberto Acereda, who currently works as Senior Strategic Advisor to the Vice President and COO of Higher Education at Educational Testing Service, ETS, in Princeton, New Jersey. Dr. Acereda focuses on strategic planning with colleges and universities in order to create solutions for student success and student learning outcomes assessments, leading to better academic experience for all learners and students. For almost 20 years and until 2012, Dr. Acereda worked as a professor in several universities and more particularly at Arizona State University, where he served for several years as department chair and also as director of graduate studies at the School of International Letters and Cultures. At Arizona State University, Dr. Acereda was also a member of the Provost Executive Committee and the president of the Academic Senate in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, where he was also named Dean's Fellow. While Dr. Acereda continues to be a faculty affiliate at Arizona State University, he has also been a visiting scholar and professor in the School of Arts and Sciences at the University of Pennsylvania. Dr. Acereda serves on the editorial board of several scholarly journals, and he's also a member of the North American Academy of the Spanish Language, a branch of the Spanish Royal Academy. Please welcome Dr. Alberto Acereda. Well, buenos días a todos y uh, bienvenidos a Puerto Rico. Es un placer estar aquí otra vez. It's a real pleasure to be back here. So I will be talking today to you uh, from the ETS perspective about student learning outcomes with the expectation that we can then later on talk a little bit together and have a panel. And I appreciate your invitation. And it's, again, it's a pleasure to be here. So the presentation I'm going to give you, it's about in how we enhance the assessment of SLOs, student learning outcomes. And we need to start by kind of giving a definition of what we understand at ETS about SLOs. This is part of a national conversation. The uh, front pages you see there from uh, magazines like Time have been talking about all the debate that we're seeing in the United States and around the world about, about what is really university doing for our students. So these discussions we have today here will help us kind of address some of those issues. So I will start by defining what we see at ETS as SLOs, student learning outcomes. We, we define it as the set of shared attitudes, values, goals, and practices inherent in institutions' commitment to being accountable for creating an environment that seeks to facilitate ever-improving learning. As you know, and these are just three snapshots of what it's going on out there just in the last year about accreditation and about the importance of SLOs. Inside Higher Education has been publishing a lot of things on this. And in, at the end of the day, our institutions, one of the roles for the institutions, and again, I was before I was for 20 years in a different universities across the US, is what is it that we're teaching our students? What are their student learning outcomes based on what faculty members and administrators and students put together? One of the areas, and we have uh, somebody here from the Middle State Commission, the accreditation is really important. And part of this accreditation has to do also with, with the student learning outcomes. So colleges and universities are facing mounting uh, pressures for accountability. There is a, an increased demand for, for SLOs and the need to actually assess those SLOs in a reliable and valid manner. That's what my company, ETS, tries to do around the world, and particularly in the United States. So we have to deal with this pyramid of multiple stakeholders where we have accreditation agencies, where we have parents, students, and public in general, and we also have the legislatures, the Board of Regents, uh, Board of Trustees, all of them looking at these areas with the expectation that at the end of the day, those student learning outcomes will help our students position their, their, themselves in the job market. We did a market research quickly just to show you what higher educations are, are seeing as top reasons for needing uh, proof of student learning outcomes. And you can see here accreditation, accountability, curriculum improvement, and effectiveness is, are the top four priorities for, for higher education institutions. 
So ETS is trying to redefine SLO, and as a non-for-profit, uh, mission-driven organization, we are really dedicated to advancing quality and equity in education. We are also committed to bringing information and data into national dialogues on critical issues like this HETS conference. And I believe that our work from our researchers and assessment developers, uh, our work on student learning outcomes reflects these values. And I want to share with you, uh, I'm going to give you kind of a high-level overview about some of the things we're doing. So we have generated in the last decade three of, uh, actually four important research papers from our researchers on different areas regarding student learning outcomes. So I want to I wanna just mention these four, this post-secondary assessment and learning outcomes. You have, by the way, you have them all in our website, ets.org slash learning outcomes, and you can find them all in PDF there because they've been published, and I invite you to, to, to take a look at them. So the first one was in 2006, so one in, in 07, critical features of assessment of, for post-secondary student learning. The 2008, which is the one I'll be talking in more detail, is the an evidence-centered approach to accountability for SLOs. And the most recent one had to deal with uh, motivation, uh, measure and learning outcomes in higher education and motivation matters. So from this evidence-centered design approach that we have implemented at ETS, we're trying to respond to the challenges within this accountability paradigm. We're trying to create processes that will help you as best practices on how to assess your students in, at your institution from your different disciplines. So we created um, in 2008 a seven-step process that took some national traction on how we can guide our colleges and universities to develop and create systems for assessing those SLOs. So this model is based on a kind of this circular seven steps where we articulate desired SLOs, we do an assessment audit, the third would be an assessment augmentation, the fourth would be a refining the assessment system, learning from our efforts as institutions and as, as uh, stakeholders, ensuring student learning a, a success, and finally maintaining a culture of evidence. And that culture of evidence is key when we speak about student learning outcomes. So I'm going to go quickly over these steps, and I'll be more than glad to talk to you after. I know I only have 20 minutes. I'll be more than glad to talk to you about these steps and put you in touch with our researchers as well. The first step is articulating desired SLOs. What are the aspirations that you as institutions have for your students, and for what purposes do we wish to document the results? What claims does the college or institution wish to make about student learning outcomes? What forms of learning are we interested in? Are we talking about distance learning? Are we talking to more hybrid, blended? With whom do we want to share evidence of student learning outcomes? Is this something you really want to have an effect on your students for the future? And if you do, how will we use the evidence of learning? The second step would be what we call an assessment audit. What existing evidence can address student learning goals? So what types of data do you have available? and how directly relevant are these data in light of step one. And here in this graphic, I put together the concept of learning center stage, and then you have different ways of, of looking at what students are learning through surveys, interviews, focus groups on the left, through portfolios or e-portfolios, and then through standardized tests, which is what we do, embedded assessments as formative and summative rubrics, GPAs, and this ecosystem will provide you with a, a little bit of a, of, a, of a general overview of what an assessment audit would be. The step three assessment augmentation would ask the question of what additional evidence is needed for your institutions to be successful when it comes to SLOs. The first question would be, are there gaps between what your institution would like to be able to claim about student learning outcomes? and what claims the currently available data support. You have to look at your data. And if you haven't been keeping a data, it's time to do it because we're living today in a world where, as you know, big data is key for us to help our students in different personalized and adaptive learning purposes. Another question to ask is, what approaches can be implemented to collect and analyze data? And this, I have to say, as being a former administrator and a former faculty member, it requires an alliance between your faculty and your administration. 
This partnership of faculty and institutional uh, research and administration is, again, key if you really want to succeed, or at least that's how we see it at ETS. Step four would be to refine the assessment system. And refining assessment system means that if you have homegrown assessments made by your faculty member, you may want to introduce new assessments. You want to continue valuable existing measures and ending assessments that do not really provide evidence that are relevant for SLOs. So in order to do that, you can review processes and systems for collecting data, as I said earlier. You can establish clear expectations for analysis of the data, for communicating and sharing the results. This is not something you can put in a locker, you need to kind of use it. And then the next steps that follow from these results are some of the issues that we need to look at. So we go to step five, where one of the recommendations by our researchers and assessment developers at ETS is we really need to learn from our efforts. And not only from the efforts of your institution, but also from your uh, uh, aspiring institutions or colleagues. So what do the results from our assessment system tell us regarding our aspirations for student learning? To what degree have aspirations of student learning been realized? And this effort needs to be an ongoing, iterative, and cascading process of analyzing this output from overall institutions' assessment activities. So there's not just one best practice, but a summary of different ones that can help you and lead you to the next step, which would be the sixth step, which is to ensure student learning success. We talk about student learning outcomes, but we also need to talk about success. And this has a lot to do with what we'll discuss about retention. This is all a whole process that goes from the beginning all the way until students graduate, and then how do we help them to go into the workplace. So what institutional changes need to be made to address learning shortfalls and ensure that current successes continue? See, what do we need to do so students are successful? What can we change so they can actually be out there and use correctly what they've learned in your institution? How will the results of the data analysis be shared and, communication, and communicated to stakeholders? And what steps need to be taken to address deficiencies and maintain success? The fact that if you are in a university or in a college and you're successful, that doesn't mean that you cannot improve. There is always room for improvement. And, and, and meetings like this one will help us see what others are doing as well. The last step would be to maintain a culture of evidence. And a culture of evidence means, and that's why we titled our three of our uh, uh, research papers from our scientists, a culture of evidence. Because we need to live in a culture where we say we're teaching, we're showing students what they need to know to move forward. So, this, um, these institutional changes are needed to make, to make this an ongoing, long-time effort. What are those changes? First, we cannot reflect just an effort for accreditation. What that means is that this is an ongoing process. We cannot just wait a year before we have to go for accreditation and say, and you all know that, say, oh, we have to run for that. We need to do this as a at a regular basis so this makes sense and it has some validity behind it. It requires a proactive response that shares and uses the results. This must be, as I said earlier, an institution-wide effort, continuous and iterative, where faculty, administrators, and leaders in your student body also participate. And faculty need to own the process, and administrators need to value this process and their results. So this, has be, this is a, a, an efficient and effective process that needs to be done in that way and so you can get to your final goal. We at ETS are trying to demonstrate that students are learning, and we have data to prove that. We, that's where we, we take our time to build those assessments. Right now, we have three different assessments out there for you to use, and I know some of you use them, like the EPP, the ETS Proficiency Profile, the iSkills Assessment, the ETS Major Field Test, but I want to share this with you to conclude my remarks this morning, that at this point, we are uh, we're having recent and ongoing research at ETS. We're working to try to define 21st century cognitive and non-cognitive skills to provide the foundation for this quality assessment. And we're looking both at subject content in your disciplines, but more specifically 
about general education and student learning outcomes in general education, looking at areas co both cognitive and non-cognitive, such as critical thinking, quantitative literacy, uh, oral and written communication, uh, civic engagement. Some of the areas that our faculty members say they are teaching, but we need to prove it with data. So ETS is very happy to be here, as I said earlier. It's a pleasure to be with you, and I will be more than glad to talk to you in person and put you in touch with our researchers and our people at ETS. Again, thank you, Puerto Rico, for having us. Muchas gracias. Thank you.